Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today I have a brand new project. I'm going to show you guys how I set up Git for my Godot projects, right? So this is a brand new project. I started, I started this project just yesterday. Um, so here I have my Godot project and I'm going to show you the tools that I use to set up Git and how do I use Git on my day-to-day, -day, right? So the first thing that you would have to do is download VS Code. I think it's a great text editor, great code editor, has a bunch of extensions, integrates perfectly with Godot. So you download this guy and then you open your Godot project inside VS Code, which after you download VS Code, all you need to do is you go inside a Godot project, you go into show file manager, and then you find the root of your project, which is here. And then here you click the right button, show more options. And here you have open with code. When you do that, you're going to have this. And you're going to have this. And this is my project. I'm not going to go into it. But what you will have to do is that you will have to go into extensions and you will um, you will install an extension called Git Lens. This is not needed for this, but this is going to help you a lot with the with your Git users with VS Code. But to set up Git with the Do and VS Code, all you need to do is with your project open, you're just going to come in here into the third tab, source control, and you're going to click initialize repository. Um, detect and manage and save. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Now you have um, initialized Git. And what this did is that this actually um, this created a dot git uh, folder in here that is not not showing right now because it would need to refresh this. But anyway, you can see that your Git repository is uh, initialized. And when you actually create your project with Godot, if you check the version control option, it actually created this Git attributes and Git ignore, which is which are very bland files right now. Git ignore basically tells you um, the files and folders that Git reversion control will ignore the changes on, so automatically has this dot do on it. And Git attributes, it helps you uh, basically work with LFS, which is large file system uh, for Git, right? Um, so the next thing you need to do is you need to go to another URL called Git pass. Uh, I'm going to have this down in the description. You're going to download this and uh, to download and install once you download it and install set up git LFS by run. So <clears throat> after you downloaded this, all you need to do is that you come here, you copy this file, you come back to VS Code, you go into terminal, new terminal, and you just type git LFS install. Now git LFS is initialized, so you have, but it's not really doing anything because all, all it has is this. So in order to have a really good starting point for you get attributes and get ignore, and then you can customize it later, of course, what I always do is that, is that I just go to Google and type Godot, get ignore and Godot, get attributes. I'm going to have the links down in the description and I just literally copy and paste. So this is a, for example, if you go on this standard uh, Godot, get ignore file, it's a good starting point for any project. So you can just come in here, copy and paste and Add this to your git ignore. You can see that your dot godot was already there. And the next thing is the same for git attributes. Again, the links are going to be in the description. You just copy and paste this, and then you add it in here. Yeah, then you add it in here. So this is this is going to tell git lfs how to treat certain certain types of files, right? And this is a good starting point, like I said, right? Um, what else? So now your Git repository is initialized, right? If you go to the source control tab here, it's already telling you the changes. Since it's the first time I'm actually initializing this, everything is being added to your project, right? But I don't really use Git uh, VS Code to manage my version control changes. I actually use another software, which is called uh, Source Free which is this guy. Also, the link's going to be in the description. It's a free Git GUI 
for Mac and Windows. And it's really good. Um, and it gives a really good view of everything that's going on. And, and it's basically this guy right here. I, you can see that I already have a couple of projects going on here. And once you have your project initialized, all you need, all you're going to have to do is that you're going to click on this plus button and you're going to come in here into add a local repository. And here you're going to find uh, your repository, which is here. You can see that VS Code created this doc git folder, right? And you're going to select it. You can give it a name if you want, add it and boom that's it so now you have this here and here you, you would have a list of branches a list of tags if you had it a list of remotes if you already push it to github and why not and then here your first commit is usually just this right you just type initial commit and you need to stage the files staging basically means that here are the list of all the changes that you did and in staging you're going to stage all this is the first one um and it's basically going to tell, okay, include all these files inside your, uh, inside this commit. Because sometimes you want to break things into different commits, so you don't stage all files. into. And here, it's telling me that some files are not really tracked by Git LFS. For now, it's fine. Uh, this is basically related to the jolt that I added to this project. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I stage all the files, initial commit, um, and commit, and boom, I already have one main commit here. And the next thing I would do, right, is I would go to my GitHub, or if you don't have a GitHub account, you should go to github.com and create one. I'll go to repositories, uh, new. Uh, here I'm just gonna call my project Dream Runner. Dream Runner. Uh, I'm gonna set it to private. Uh, don't need to read me right now. License, I don't need it. Create repository. Great. Now you have an empty repository on your GitHub, and now all you need to do is just you copy this guy and uh, you can also add a remote from here. Uh, I'm just not really sure. Oh, there is an add remote right here. Add remote name, origin, default remote. Okay. Okay. Uh, in usually what I would do is that I would just do this git. Go find the command line, go to this source of root of a project, git uh, remote, remote, add the name, origin, and then type this. I'm not going to do that now because if I do like a git, let's git remote v, you can see that uh, source tree already added for me. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to push my changes push main to main push um, hopefully it's gonna pick up my credentials it's pushing is taking a little while because it's probably quite a lot of files this that is trying to push and it did push so now if I refresh this guy now I have all my project files inside my GitHub. the only thing that was missing from this Little tutorial is get for Windows or get for. I mean, Mac and Linux usually they already come with this stuff, but you can find, you can download all the Git files from this git slash uh, git dash scm.com. Git for Windows is going to install everything that you need. Git for Mac, it, you, you can also install with Brew or you can download an installer. And for Linux, is the same thing. And that's it for today, today, guys. I just wanted to give you guys a really practical rundown of how I set up my Git repositories for my Google projects, and I'll see you next time.